So this is a video that I promised to make um, about aligning the laser that I built uh, six, well I started in January this year and finished it a couple of months ago and it's been learning its living since then. Um, but what I probably, having, although I built several CNC machines before this, I hadn't really considered the, how, just how tricky it is to actually align a laser, particularly a larger laser. I mean, this is not an enormous laser, but it's a, it's a 1200 by 600 uh, working area, which means you've got a long axis in the middle and you've got potential for um, the alignment to be off. So this video is going to try and explain how you go about fixing the problems that I designed into it without really realising and actually getting it to align properly, which, which, it, which it is now, thankfully, but uh, here it goes. So first principles, um, I think it pays to just just talk about what we're dealing with. I think we, we all know what a, la a CO2 laser is built of, but I'll, I'll just go through and just so we're clear and we're on the same page and understand what I'm talking about. So CO2 laser tube, cut out on the laser. <laughs> um, you have on my machine, I've got two axes, which are the Y axis, which are parallel and the X axis. Now, what is important to know about this basic design is that these two axes, the Y axis, must be dead parallel to each other. Quite important. If you don't get that right, then you're setting yourself up for failure as so many of the other alignments things are here. The tube and the x-axis need to be aligned in that way. So x-axis sits that way and the tube's that way, so it needs to be perfectly parallel and straight to the tube. In addition, this is not the correct mirror, but in addition, the tube, when it's mounted in the laser, needs to be at the same height. So the centre of the tube where the, where the light comes out needs to be at the same height as the centre of the mirror, which is mounted here, in actual fact like that. That's the laser head. We'll call that the laser head, and that's number three. Number one mirror will go there, and number two mirror goes is fixed to the x-axis. So it's important that the the mirror on the laser head and the mirror the center of the mirror on mirror number two, we'll call that number two, um, are at the same height and are at the same distance from the x-axis. It's also important that the mirror one and mirror two are the same distance from the y-axis and at the same height. So they need to be the same height as the center of the CO tube needs to hit mirror number one at the center, height-wise. Number two, the center, and number three, the centre. If you can get those things worked out, then you're ahead of the game. Um, that makes, before you even consider adjusting the mirrors with the, the little thumb screws on the mirrors, um, get that right and then you've got a good foundation. Now, that can be hard to do and um, I went to great lengths to get my machine so it's dead level and it took a lot of time to do go through how I did that so as I said before this is my laser um, as I explained in the, uh, the video before y-axis one there and one there and then x-axis now, on this machine, you can't see the tube at all. It's hidden behind 
behind that plate you can see the mirror number one there and the tube is just to the right of it and for me to get to that I'd have to disassemble the whole thing and I'm not going to do that right now but what I absolutely ensured and it's really important is that the x-axis is flat or rather in the same planar the flatness of the tube is exactly the same as the flatness of the x-axis okay and also that the center of the co2 laser tube is at the center of this hole which leads to the mirror now on my laser my laser head i don't have the ability to raise and lower that mirror it's in a fixed position which is a slightly annoying you, you you can shim this plate so there's the the linear rail block i could probably i could shim it up so it could be raised but it certainly can't be lowered um and given the choice i think i would have one that was it was possible to raise and lower i don't know whether it's available i haven't actually found one but i can't believe that it wouldn't be So once once you've established that there are that they are at the same height, you then proceed to make mirror number one. The centre of that must be the same height as the centre of the dot coming out of the tube. This you do by using your pulse key, and that will fire a short burst. And then you can, by using tape, which I'll, I'll do, we'll do a demonstration of that. By using tape, you can. Um, establish where your center is once you've done that you need to make sure that this let this mirror which is mirror number two on my machine is at the same height and as a consequence it really should hit the center of the laser head too now that's done <laughs> what what's that's actually not so hard to do what's it what is in fact quite hard to do is to get the center of this mirror in in that plane equidistant to the center of that mirror in relation to the x-axis so the distance from the x-axis must be the same on mirror two as it is on the laser head and the same height which we discussed before and again mirror two needs to be at the same height as the center of mirror three and at the same distance from the x from the y-axis using myself now but from the y-axis now to level, level the axes of the of the laser um, you need some form of level i'm fortunate enough to have this laser at this level bubble level um, which is a high precision engineering level and accurate to as it says on there 0 0.02 of a millimeters to a meter and that means that these gradients, as you can see, these gradients, each one of those is equivalent to uh, two tenths of a millimetre across a metre. So that's pretty accurate. You don't really need to be that accurate. It's nice to be, but you don't have to be, and an ordinary bubble, bubble level will actually do you. But I'll just give you a quick demonstration of how I, uh, I do it. Now I've added these screws to each corner of the laser. You can see the design of it, it's very simple. And that has actually lifted lifts the wheels off the floor. Um, I found that although my my table is quite rigid, quite rugged, it's um, the floor isn't flat. And although what's important is that the the um, the axes are, are are level to each other, it's easier to make it level to the world and then work from there. So using a bubble level, so that's what I'm trying to achieve. So I hope you can see there that with the uh, the level sitting on the y-axis of my machine, um, the bubble is almost exactly in the centre of the tube. This is on the left-hand side. However, on the right-hand side, the bubble at the moment is showing that the front front right corner is high. So I'll just adjust that. So by adjusting the nut to the left. Mm. 
the bubble should be coming into alignment. Still just a tickle high actually. Now getting down to fine adjustments. That'll do, it's close enough, it's good enough. It's, um, that's pretty accurate really. So to set the height of the lenses accurately, I've created these dots. One, the small one size to fit into the laser head and the larger one is size to fit into, to cover the mirror. So those dots go, one fits into the laser head like that. And then the other one, which is sized to fit into the, to cover the mirror. Now to get the height, I use this piece of antique equipment. It's an engineer's oh, um, height gauge, but it's a, mine's an antique one. Prob probably is over a hundred years old. But uh, anyway, it serves a purpose and you can make something similar. It's just a, a base with a rod and a pointer, on, an adjustable pointer up and down. So I move the scribe so that it's at the center of the dot. Just up a little bit. <laughs> Fiddly. This thing's got some fine adjustment size actually. I should use those really, shouldn't I? Anyway, that's the center of the dot. And uh, uh, that now gives you a reference. Um, because, because the laser head is a fixed point, need to reference from that so by getting that the same height then mirror one the same height and then the laser tube the same height the laser tube is adjustable when I, when I designed this I thought about that possibility and made it so that you can move the, the laser tube up and down it's a bit crude but it but it does work so now having got the, the height set accurately need to make sure that the the center of the the lens is the same distance as the centre of that mirror, as mirror number number two. And to that end I made this gadget. <laughs> I don't know whether it's the right thing to do to be honest, but it works very well for me, so this is the way I've gone. But the important thing is to do this after getting the height, the height of the, uh, the laser correct. So I designed this piece of MDF to sit against the linear rail. And then, as you can see, it points exactly to the centre of the lens. And using the same principle, it points to exactly the centre of the dot on the piece of MDF on the mirror. So having done that, you need to achieve the same thing for, so using that again, and another one in laser in mirror number number one. Make sure that they're the same height and the same distance from the axis. All the time making sure that the CO2 tube points at the centre of that mirror. Easy to lose that alignment. <laughs> Ask me how I know. So I'm going to call that the end of part one. Um, if you can align, align the machine in that way, uh, get all the axes level and parallel to each other, then lining the mirrors is actually really very straightforward. There are a few tricks to it, and um, lising, ali particularly in aligning the laser head, that can be a little bit awkward. But anyway, thank you for watching. I'll see you in part two.